Here are two contrasting probability examples to illustrate uh, when you need to use order and when you can not, when you can afford not to use order in a, a uh, sort of counting and probability problem. Okay, so here's the first problem. We are going to have. I want to. I want to uh, analogize this to dice rolling. So I'm going to do a card problem, but it's going to be a little bit of a weird deck of cards. I've got a very small deck of cards. Uh, I've got a deck with just the ace of clubs, that's how I denote ace of clubs, so I don't have to draw the club all the time. Two of clubs through six of clubs. It's just six cards. They're all clubs. And the ace here I'm thinking of as a one. Okay. And uh, I'm going to draw I'm gonna, uh, draw two cards. Okay. And I want the probability that the sum... Uh, of the values where this is counting as 1, the sum is equal to 3. So, rather like a, the kind of thing you do with the dice rolling problem, and I'm going to do the exact same, this analogous dice rolling problem in a minute. Okay, And as usual, when you draw two cards, that's going to be without replacement. I actually make a hand of two cards. Okay, so uh, what's our sample space? And that's just pairs of cards from A through 6. Okay, And I get to choose, uh, or you know, in principle, I get to choose whether to count them with order or not. Okay, And so version A, I'm going to count them with order. So ordered pair of cards. I'm going to pay attention to which one is the first, which one is the second. Now, the rules of the probably the event that I'm looking at doesn't care about order because this is an ace, a two, or a two and an ace. But uh, the safe bet is to count with order, and we'll see when we can afford not to do that and when we can't. Okay, so um, so that's just going to be uh, how many choices for the second card. So the number of outcomes in the sample space is how many choices for the first card, which is 6, times how many choices for the second card, which is 5. And I'm ordering them, so I'm not dividing by anything. OK, so uh, and then the number of outcomes in the event that I want, well, as I said, the only ways to get this is ace 2 and 2 ace. That's 2. OK, and so the probability of that event, sum equals 3, is going to be 2 over 6 times 5, 2 over 30, or 1 out of 15. Okay, and that's a correct calculation. And one way to really, really be sure of that, or I don't know, be more sure of that, is in these very, very small cases with sample spaces, with small, small sample spaces, um, I can actually draw the entire sample space. Now, usually you can't do that, and that's why we need uh, fancy counting rules and fancy probability rules. Okay, just barely made it. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, um, so this is going to be ace. Oop, I was going to put in ace ace there, but the whole point of this really, there's no such thing as ace ace because it's without replacement. So here's ace two and two ace. Here's ace three and two two and three ace, etc. There are. Oh, and two two doesn't work. Um, my mind is drifting here. Okay. So there's nothing here, 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 here. There's nothing along the diagonal. And so we don't have 36 possibilities. We have 30 only, 6 times 5, because for every column, for example, there's one row missing, one entry missing. And I am interested in those two. And I just have to believe that each one of these individual boxes is equally probable. And they are. OK, so method two for the same problem, let's see if we could count without order. Because that can be more efficient and give smaller numbers to in the calculation. Um, and it's nice to know if somebody does this without order, are they just flat wrong? Well, let's count it without order. Okay, so what we're going to do, okay, so now the number in the new sample space where we count these guys without order is, okay, there's a choice for the first, six choices for the first card, five choices for the second card, but then I divide by two to take into account that I don't care about the order. OK, that's 15. What that does, and this is really crucial here, let me let me do one a few more here. This is 4, ace, 3, 2, 2, 3, 
uh, ace4. What that does is it just pairs these guys across the diagonal. And the cool thing is, if you don't include the diagonal, everybody has exactly one pair. There's no exceptions. There's no weird cases to screw up the pattern. Okay, so I'm just going to treat these guys as the same. I'm going to treat these guys as the same. So in the sample space, I don't make any distinction between them. And I do that consistently. The key is that I'm basically making a new sample space where each thing in the sample space is a pair. A pair of these, a pair of these, this pair, or this pair, etc., down to like this pair. And each of those is exactly two things from the old sample space. So they have the same probability as each other. Okay, so... That is a legal sample space from our point of view, at least when we introduce probability, when we start working on it, we only know how to deal with sample spaces where each outcome has an equal probability. And we'll, we'll be up, move beyond that, but that's where we're at in our class right now, okay? Because the outcomes have equal probability. Because I've just been grouping things together in a consistent fashion. Um, okay, and I'll come back to an example where this won't work in a minute, okay, as a contrast. Okay, so now, how many events are we looking at? Well, from this perspective, where we group these two guys together, there's only one event. It has to be ace and two in some order. And we get the probability is the same, 1 over 15. What we've really done is we've taken the two events that we had before, group them, so we said, oh, that's really just one event, and we had the 30 ev events, uh, the 30 outcomes, rather, in the sample space we had before, and group those guys, the over twos cancel, and I get the same number. And that's because of the consistency here. And the key was, this is without replacement, okay? So it's without replacement, and that means that there was no diagonal here. There was no doubles or repeats to mess up this pattern of grouping. Everything got paired. And that's really going to be the, the punchline to this, is that if it's without replacement, you can count, you can do probability problems either without order or with order. And it's really up to you. Okay, so a uh, second example, rolling dice. I almost shouldn't have erased my sample space, but it's kind of small anyway. And it's different notation now, just a little. Okay, I'm rolling two dice, six-sided dice, one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one, five. Here's the sample space. Again, this is so small, I can write it all out. Three, two, um, three, three. Let's just do a little more. Okay. Da, 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 da. Actually, let me let me highlight the diagonals here. And then maybe put in these guys. Okay. I don't want to waste your time, though. Okay. So, rolling two dice. And the thing about rolling dice is you allow doubles. Okay. So, this is really sampling twice from the numbers one through six, just like we did with the cards. But now, it's with replacement. Okay. And that means the doubles are legal. And that can all already basically tells us that there's going to be some difference here. If I try to group everything across the diagonal, these guys are going to pair, but doubles don't have a pair. These guys could be paired together, but doubles are special. Okay, um, Okay. so I want the probability of getting a sum equal to 3. Okay, so uh, strategy A, let's say, analogous to what we did before, count it with order. Okay, the sample space is exactly what I have shown here. Every combination of one of one through six on each way, counting order, so counting these as distinct. Number of things in the sample space is 36. Uh, it's 36, not 30, because the doubles are now allowed. Okay, and the number of things in the event, oh, there's still two ways to get it, a one, two, or a two, one. That's two. And we get the probability of sum equal to three, that's our event E is 2 out of 36, which is 118, uh, 1 out of 18. Now, it's slightly different from the other example because something has changed. We're doing it with replacement now. Okay, I have to basically avoid the doubles, um, and that makes the probability of getting a 3 a little bit smaller. We can really do the very, very low-tech way uh, if we just draw this whole sample space out and really say, look, it's these two. If I believe all of these 36 boxes have equal probability, and they do, 
then it's going to be 2 out of 36, just by straight up counting an explicit display. Okay, so that's the correct answer. Check, check. And I did it with order. In the other case, without when I had without replacement, I was able to do it. Oh, I just erased my lovely, my lovely thing. Okay, well, I'm just going to write down the key parts. Uh, one, 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 two, two, one. I get so eager to erase sometimes. Uh, that's going to be good enough. Okay. Um, B, this is going to be the wrong way to do it, so don't imitate this. Okay. I could say um, count without order. Okay. How many things in the sample space? Okay. If I count without order, well, it's basically everybody has a representative above that diagonal. I'm going to include the, the diagonal ones, the doubles, and everything above here. And so it's going to be um, very similar to what we had before. Um, it's going to be six choices for the first one, five choices for the second one, and divided by two. Um, oops, uh, nope, no, 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 my bad. Okay, with when you have with replacement, it's a little bit more subtle than this. Okay, because it's not just five times it, uh, for the other ones. Let's just let's just write it out. This is another aspect that's more complicated. Five six five five etc. Okay, so it's going to be one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six. It's really the sum of an arithmetic sequence. This is another thing that even counting the sample space is a little bit trickier. Okay, if you sum that up, it's twenty one. Okay. So there's 21 possibilities. If I ignore, if, if I say 1, 3 is just basically the same as 3, 1, so I don't even have to count the stuff under here. So there's 21 possibilities there. Okay. And then I'm thinking the number of things in my event. Okay. The person before who was doing the other method said it's either 1, 2, or 2, 1. And now I say that's the same thing. I make absolutely no distinction. So there's one thing here. So this person thinks the probability is not 1 out of 18. They think it's 1 out of 21. And this is flat wrong. Okay. The reason is that if you think of this as one event and this as another, or sorry, this is one outcome, this is another outcome, things that are indivisible, and these two paired together as another outcome, and this is a separate outcome, then these are just not the same. Some of them are just really one outcome, and really, and the other ones are two paired together. Now, why could we pair them together in the previous example with the cards? We could pair them together because it was totally consistent. We paired everything in the sample space calculation, the count. We paired everything in looking at our event. But here, even though our event is just one of these guys that has where the 1, 2, and the 2, 1 have a pair, I have to do that on a background where the sample space has two different kinds of outcomes. These guys and these guys, the ones along the diagonal, and these guys are twice as probable as this. And it's much more complicated to work on a problem, work in a sample space, where the outcomes, some of the outcomes have twice the probability as the others. And you certainly can't just count outcomes um, of the event in the event you're interested in and count outcomes in the sample space and divide if you have that non-uniformity. So I wanted to give that very, very explicit example to justify a very general principle. This is not, I don't claim it's a proof, but it really is a very general principle, is that uh, if you allow replacement and you're doing a probability problem, then you must count with order. And it's really important that it doesn't matter whether you don't think, whether you don't care about the order. We didn't care in, in our, we win the game. If the game is, you win if you get a sum of three on the dice, I won with a one, two, or a two, one. I don't care about the distinction, but nature cares. Okay, and if you allow replacement, you must count with order. If you don't allow replacement, then you can count either with or without order, but do it consistently, for God's sake. Okay, if you're going to count the sample space with order, count your event with order. If you're going to count the sample space without order, count your event without order. Don't ever do it inconsistently. So always be consistent. Okay, that's where I want to stop.